Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Uh, this video is for uh, it's going to be for people who want to start with Fusion 360 or just started the Fusion, Fusion uh, 360. It is very important because uh, I've seen a lot of people on the Fusion 360 forum that uh, ask this question how do I start or people who just started with Fusion 360 and they're asking some question and it's very clear that they didn't really understand yet what is Fusion Fusion 360 is all about, I mean, the mindset behind it, uh, or mostly actually you can also say the workflow behind Fusion 360. So uh, hopefully with my experience, I can uh, help you with this uh, transition. Uh, down below uh, in the description, uh, you will see a few links that I've added. I'm going to go through them uh, in a moment. But uh, first of all, I want you to uh, understand uh, that the difference between programs and almost, almost it doesn't matter about which program is it it's not only about the functionality but it's also the different mindset workflow behind it um, fusion 360 it's a cat system and more like many other cat system but it's still different or what we call same same but different um, so it's very important when you're moving from other card system to other card system that you don't try to assume uh, different things about the workflow or the, uh, the, um, the, the mindset, the functionality, that it's going to be the same. And there is also a very good reason for that. So in order to understand the why, you must understand the how. Because I also think that that people don't understand and asking why is it working like that and with other program I used to do this way and it just did it that way and so on and so on and it's gonna help it's gonna really gonna be really frustrating for you and that's what actually what happened to me think about you know like when you're moving to from one country to another so naturally most people starting to compare between the countries they say oh in my country we're doing like this and like that and so on. Uh, so don't do that, um, really, it's a waste of time. So first of all, you just have to really try to understand, to learn how things have been done in Fusion 360, how you sketch, and uh, for example, constraints, how they work, the 3D, how it works, and the different functionality. And uh, then slowly you're going to start to get a much better picture of the uh, why actually Fusion 360 is working like that. There is a good reason for that. And uh, so it's not, most of the time, it's not a bug or something. It's just because you don't know how to use it in Fusion 360. Um, overall, uh, when you're going to go through all the different links uh, down below, uh, you're going to actually see some few seminars and videos that talked about the top-down VS bottom-up design. And Fusion 360 is focused uh, a lot about the uh, top-down design because it makes a lot more sense. Um, especially, you know, when you're working on assembly. I mean, but if you're just working on one single uh, part, so it just really doesn't matter. Another thing it's uh, very important. So now before you start, if you're just going to start with Fusion, I really suggest you to go to the uh, Fusion 360 YouTube channel, go through uh, all the different videos, and there are plenty of them, just you know, to give you the idea or the sense of how Fusion 360 work, uh, not only just the cool stuff behind it. And uh, <clears throat> when you finish with that, um, then you can start actually experiment a little bit with the, do some sketches, do some 3Ds and understand how it actually works. Um, there are one thing that's very, very important and the Aaron from uh, Fusion 360, he just uh, created this video because we talked a lot about it in the forum. And um, I cannot take the credit for that. It's one of the guys over there who started this movement, which we call uh, rule number one. And here in this video, uh, Aaron actually is going to talk about this. And I'm going to give you a little bit uh, explanation about this rule number one. What is it so important? So, um, yeah. Okay, let's start. Rule number one, 
always before you start uh, to design a new part, a new component, always create a new component and activate it. Also later on, when you start to create more components, then every time you work on a component, remember to activate it. And why is it important? It is because it's going to help you with the structure of the whole assembly, the whole design. When you work on a component, for example, let's say we're going to work on this one. Um, quickly, I'm going to create a sketch. And let's create a cube right here. I'm going to extrude it. Yes. Now, everything that I've created here, it's going to be under this component. You see the bodies here and the sketches here. And if I've created a construction plan, it's also going to be here. So it's very important. So I, I want you to think about the component uh, because there were also a lot of confusion between what is a component and what is a body. Think about the component. The way I look at it, it's, it's a, just a box. And inside this box, you have all the other things. You have the bodies, you have the sketches, and you're going to have the different features inside the box. And structurally, it's going to be much easier to you later on to work with it. Because imagine that you have, let's say, 100 parts. And if you want to go backwards and to do some changes to parts, that's going to be a whole mess. If you're going to look down here to the timeline, it's going to be full of a lot of information, a lot of things that you have done. And to look for it, it's going to be really not easy. So this way, it's much more logical. It it's, it's makes a lot more sense. On top of that, I don't know if you notice here, but the components are color uh, coded. Between every time you create a component, you create a part, it's going to be going to have its own color. So it's going to be much easier for you to find it in the bottom on the timeline. And I'm going to give you, let's make another one. Let's make another component. As you see, now it's like this bluish color. And this one is yellow and pink. And let's say I'm going to create, um, let's see, another one here. I'm going to create it on top of this one. And okay, I'm going to extrude it. Whoop. And voila. So now, if we go to the top, we activate the root component. Now you can see everything that I have actually done here. It's the history. You can see the components, another component, create a sketch, extrude, create a component, scratch, extrude, and, and so on and so on. So now if I'm not going to activate the component, let's say I'm going to want to create a change to, the, to this square here. Yeah. Let's say I'm going to create a fillet. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to give it, uh, let's say, I don't know, five millimeters. Okay. What's happened is it's going to be saved here. Yeah. In the timeline. But when I go here under the component, it's also actually showed here. Yes. But if I'm going to create a sketch here on the top that actually should be belong to another component, it's not going to be under the, the, the right component. It's going to be on the top. And then it's going to be very difficult for me to find it. Let's give you an example. So I'm right here on the top. And I'm going to create um, a new sketch on top of this. Let's find, look for something, a polygon, for example. Here. Voila, you see, basically I wanted to create a new component, but what happened is because I was on the root component, so it's going to be saved here. And if you didn't activate this one, and then you're going to start to look for it and say, hey, where is this sketch? I want to edit it. Oh, it's not here. That's actually on the top. What you can actually do, you can actually move it. 
is no problem. It's just drag and drop. But that's going to be a shame. It's going to be a waste of time. You're not going to realize where it is. You're going to be pissed off. Or where did I put it? And so on and so on. So remember that rule number one, every time you create a component, activate it. It's very, very important. So um, yeah, so now that we have the really, really basics of uh, Fusion 360, so um, let's go a little bit through some, some of the other links. So here we have the, uh, the Fusion uh, channel on YouTube. Next is the uh, sketch and how it uh, gets started with Fusion 360. It's really, really good one. It's again, it's gonna teach you all about the tools, how you're gonna do the different things. Most of it you probably already know from the previous CAD system if you already have an experience. Uh, let's go next. Here is the Autodesk University. There are a lot of seminars here, actually really good seminars. Uh, so just go through them. And Yes, the next one, it's, uh, there's another uh, source here where you can get a lot of information, you can learn a lot about almost anything. The next one, it's the, of course, the uh, on the forum, you have the tip and tricks where people, when they, every time they figure out something, they're going to put it here. And <clears throat> last but not least, it's the forum itself. Here, if you have uh, on the cam, so you have a form for the cam, and here is for the, all the others, parts, sketches, designs. And uh, there are a lot of great guys over here, uh, a lot of mentors. And uh, it's very, very active. It's reacting very, very fast. If you, I think almost in every way, it's take almost five to 10 minutes since you uh, submit a, a request or a question, somebody's gonna answer you. And uh, a lot of people getting involved. Uh, so it's really, really great. Uh, you're not alone here. But it's very important that you start with the, uh, to, to understand the basics before you actually doing anything else. Because if you are not understand the workflow at Fusion, it's going to be really, really frustrating for you. Also, in regards to the assemblies about the joint and what is the as joint build, that's something that actually you're going to use a lot. And also when you're going to use the different type, uh, rigid and revolution. Again, this is very different from the other CAD system. So uh, it's different, again, different mindset. For example, if you have a screw, then you're going to use rigid. You're not going to use a slider or a cylindrical. It doesn't make any sense. So, um, yes, uh, let's just see if I forgot something. Um, no. So I just really hope to make it really short. And so remember, don't assume, uh, just be open-minded and try to understand, first of all, uh, how to do things in Fusion uh, 360. Um, and if you don't understand, so you have all the different uh, resources here, which you can uh, look for that information, look for that functionality, if it's something that you're trying to do. If, and if you can, cannot find it so you can always come here and um, yeah submit uh, a question but something uh, another thing is very important uh, when after you installed fusion 360 uh, i wanted to go into uh, google here and you can write um, auto desk screencast and download it it's free. After you download it, uh, you're going to restart uh, Fusion 360, and then you're going to have the uh, screencast here recorded. And it's very important to us, for those who are actually helping also other people, and I'm also creating myself, asking for help, to actually to simulate, to show what actually you're trying to do instead of only text, because it can be sometimes difficult for us to understand exactly well, what is it you're trying to do? So uh, more visual pictures, especially uh, a screen recorder. So you're gonna actually just uh, see, you click on record. Then uh, you can, it's because of the resolution, you're gonna record what is it exactly that you wanna do. And then uh, you click on this one again, you do a stop. And, uh, and then you save and upload, you give it a title, and then you create a public. So we, everyone can see it. 
and choose whatever category and skills, doesn't matter, then you upload it. When it's finished, then uh, it's going to take about, I don't know, three to five minutes, depending on how long is the video. Then you're going to get an email that it's ready. And that link, uh, it's going to lead you to that page where the, uh, um, the uh, uh, you can copy the URL. And then you're going to paste it. <clears throat> I'm going to show you where you're going to paste it. Let's see if we, for example, create a, a new post. Okay, I need to log in with my information. But there is a place over there where you can uh, paste the, uh, the screen, uh, the screencast. You're gonna see it. It's not gonna, uh, you're not gonna miss it. So um, that's it for now. If you have any question, just write down below the, uh, in the comments. Um, good, bad, doesn't matter. I take everything. If you like it, thumbs up. Don't didn't like it, thumbs down. Th thumbs down. And uh, I'll see you on my uh, next video.